Okay, so we're in the Gospel of John, John chapter 9. The heading is Jesus gives sight to the blind. Jesus gives sight to the blind. Um, and so our first scripture reading is John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. Mirari, if you can read that one for us. Thanks. Yes. John 9. One through twelve. Yeah. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, Why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sends us. The night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, Go wash yourself in the pool of salt Siloam. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. His neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was. Some said he was, and others said, No, he just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, Yes, I am the same one. They asked, Who healed you? What happened? He told them, the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. So I went and washed and now I can see. Where is he now? They asked. I don't know. He replied. Wow. Wow. I love the story. Okay. So what did the blind man have to do in order to exercise his faith? and demonstrate that he believed Jesus. What did he have to do? He just had to do what Jesus said, and he did. No, he had to be obedient. Yes. He had to be obedient. God told him to go wash, go wash in the pool of Shiloh. And when he did that, uh, he got healed. Wow. Mm -hmm. He came home seeing, wow. Thank you, Jesus. What has Jesus told you to do in order for you to receive your miracle? And are you willing to step out in faith? Just believe. Believe. Believe, believe and receive. You know, sometimes Jesus tells us to, uh, to do a certain thing. Sometimes he tells us to, I want you to fast and pray. Sometimes he says, um, you know, I want you to worship me. Um, Jesus will sometimes uh, give us specific instructions in order for us to achieve uh, a certain miracle. Sometimes Jesus says, okay, I want you to be blessed financially. I want to bless your basket and your kneading trough. And so I want you to start this ministry or start this business. And many times we're like, did I hear right? You know, you know, many times, <laughs> like, God, you got to say it again. Give me confirmation. There's nothing wrong with asking for confirmation. But many times if God wants to bless us financially or in another area, we have to do something, right? Mm -hmm. We have to do, because the Bible says faith. Uh, faith without works is dead. And so, yes, he, he believed, but he also had to act on his belief. He had to obey what Jesus Christ said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and he came home seeing. So on the way to the pool, he couldn't see. But after he washed his eyes, he could see. Amen. Obedience brings the blessings. 
you cannot get away from obedience. We have to be obedient to God. That is what God uh, told his people in Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know, he had made a covenant with them and he told them, my people, if you will obey me and keep my commandments, oh my goodness, these are all the blessings that will come upon you. You will be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You will be blessed going out, blessed coming in. Your enemies, they will come at you one way and flee from you seven ways. And then in the latter portion of Deuteronomy 28, God says, but if you disobey me, these are all the that will come upon you. God is our heavenly father and he requires obedience. Obey my commandments so that life will be well with you. Obey my commandments. It's just like what he told Adam and Eve. He said, you can eat from any tree in the garden except this one tree. The minute you eat from this one tree, you will die. And we see what disobedience brings. Punishment and curses and sin. And there's always a price to pay for sin. I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but um, in 2019, uh, this prophet went to Estonia. Estonia is in Eastern Europe. And the pastors there, they were having a, um, a pastor's conference. They were praying for revival in Europe. And so <clears throat> when it was his time to speak, he went and told them what God had said. God said, "In all, if you want to have revival come to Europe, this is what you must do. Every church in the area and in Europe and in Ukraine must set up a fund to help the Jewish people to return to Israel. Every church must set up a fund so that any Jewish person who wants to return to Israel can do so. And he said, if you refuse to do so, war is coming into the region in three years. He said, when he gave that prophecy, the Ukraine bishop, there was a bishop there from Ukraine, grabbed the mic from him and said, no such thing. There's no, we have peace. There's no war coming. And the brother who was interpreting his message told the cameraman, listen, delete that because I'm the one who interpreted. You know, we always know a prophet is never uh, accepted, right? Mm -hmm. And so basically they told him to go sit down. In 2022 now, here we have the war in Ukraine and all the pastors were now calling him, what must we do? Can you pray that the war stops? Everybody is coming up to him. Now. But we disobeyed as God's people. God gave direct instructions. It's just like us in America. Many prophecies have been given. The church in America must turn from her wicked ways. That's what the scripture says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 14. If my people, my people, the Christians who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. But the majority of the church, you know, still doing the same thing. Disobedience brings the punishment, but obedience brings the blessing. And I will encourage everyone to contribute to um, any Jewish ministry which is helping the Jewish people to return to Israel because God has an appointment with his people in Israel in these end times. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's move on. How does Jesus demonstrate that he can also give sight to our family members and friends that are spiritually blind? By healing. Yes. Yes. If he can heal physically, he can also heal spiritually, right? Yes. This story has a spiritual connotation to it also. 
Jesus was also showing that many other people are spiritually blind. I was spiritually blind. There are so many people who are spiritually blind now. And God is the one who has to remove the scales from our eyes so that we can see and we get the revelation. Oh my God, I can see Jesus Christ is the Messiah. So this story has a spiritual connotation. It is Jesus who has to remove the blinders from our eyes so that we can see Amen. and get revelation. Amen. All right, let's move on. Um, John chapter 9, verses 13 through 23. If you can read that for us. Okay. Then they took the man who had been blind to the Pharisees because it was on the Sabbath that Jesus had made the mud and healed him. The Pharisees asked the man all about it, so he told them. He put the mud over my eyes, and when I washed it away, I could see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man Jesus is not from God, for he is working on the Sabbath. Others said, but how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division of opinion among them. Then the Pharisees again questioned the man who had been blind and demanded, what's your opinion about this man who healed you? The man replied, I think he must be a prophet. The Jewish leaders still refused to believe the man had been blind and could not see. So they called in his parents. They asked them, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he see now? His parents replied, we know this is our son and that he was born blind, but we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him. He is old enough to speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why they said he is old enough. Ask him. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. So mm -hmm. who were who, who were the Pharisees? Who were the Pharisees? They were like priests, teachers. Yes. Yes. Teachers of the law. They interpreted the law of of Moses, but they did not practice what they preached. Yeah. So why did the Pharisees not believe that Jesus was from God? They didn't want to. They just didn't want to believe it. They didn't want to believe it. They knew that he was doing miracles, healing people, doing miraculous things that no one has ever done. And but they 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 chose not to believe. They they were blind. Well, they, yeah, they they refused to see. They yeah. didn't want. They didn't want to see. Um. Why did Jesus heal the man on the Sabbath if he knew that it would offend the Pharisees? Because he knew they were still not going to believe in him. So he he was going to do it anyway because he's Jesus. Right. And Jesus wanted to teach them about the law. Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted to teach them that I am bigger than the law. I am here to save you. The law cannot heal you. The law cannot save you. Only I can. God has given you the law to teach you to look for me. The law was given as a tutor to lead us to Christ. The law cannot save us. Only Jesus Christ can. The law was given to show us that we are sinners, that we are lawbreakers in need of a savior. That's why the scripture says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The law shows us that we, we're rotten, <laughs> that we can't keep the law. We can't keep it. There's only one person who never broke any of the 10 commandments and it was Jesus. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus was trying to show them, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. A new, there's a new covenant coming in. 
This is a new season. It's not about the law anymore. The dispensation of the law is about to be closed because I am here. The dispensation of grace is about to begin. I have come to give you life and life eternally. My kingdom is here. The kingdom of God is here. It's a new, it's a new thing going on now. The kingdom of God is in your midst. You are not in control anymore. It's all about me. And that is why the Pharisees, they couldn't handle that. They wanted to stay in control. They wanted the people to continue to, you know, look to them. They didn't want to submit and obey God. Okay. According to John 8, 44, who is the father of the Pharisees? The devil. Very good. And John 8, 44 told us that he is the father of all lies. And the Pharisees were participating and propagating the lie of Satan that Jesus was not the Christ. They, this is where the Antichrist spirit st started. Mm -hmm. Antichrist, because Christ is here on the earth now and you're Antichrist. Name the evil spirit that was driving them to oppose Jesus and his teachings. The devil of lies. Yes. And the religious spirit. Remember we talked Our about- religious spirit too, yes. Yes, that religious spirit will say it is worshiping God and kill you, which they did. They had the Ten Commandments that said, do not kill, right? But they still, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. they still went there and arrested Jesus and had him crucified. The religious spirit is still in the earth today. The religious spirit is in opposition to the Holy Spirit. The religious spirit does not want to see the Holy Spirit move in power, in healing, in deliverance. You will always have the religious spirit opposing you when you want to move in the Holy Spirit. And so you have to take authority over that spirit. The religious spirit's purpose is to stand in the way of the Holy Spirit's true work. The main attributes of the religious spirit are pride, unbelief, murder, fear, and intimidation. We see the religious spirit in the earth today. Mm -hmm. We have particular religions that want to kill you. If you say anything against their prophet, they are ready to kill you. We see the religious spirit. They are ready to um, have a suicide bomb, kill off themselves and kill other people all in the name of their religion. That is a religious spirit. That is not a spirit of Christ. That's right. So we see the religious spirit in the world. We look down there, right down there in Israel. We see the religious spirit. The war in Israel is a religious war and a spiritual war. Is Yahweh the true God? And that is what, what is going to face the whole world. Is Yahweh the true mm -hmm. God? Amen. Okay. According to verse 22, how were the Pharisees using fear and intimidation to try and stop the people from believing in Jesus? Removing them from the synagogue? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you believe in Jesus, you won't be a part of us anymore. You're going to get excommunicated. You're going to get kicked out. <laughs> Unbelievable. People pleasing again. There we go. Yeah. What Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, you're going to pick up your cross and follow me, right? Because right. we're going to be kicked out too. We're going to be treated poorly. We're going to be ostracized. We're going to be killed. Yeah. So they use fear and intimidation. I'm going to throw you out. 
of the synagogue. You won't be able to participate here anymore. You're going to lose all your friends. Oh, I'm going to bomb your city. I'm going to bomb your school. Fear and intimidation. But we as God's people have to stand firm. Fear and intimidation. That's what the devil always using. If you don't bow down to me, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. If you don't bow down to me, I'm going to chop your head off. It's crazy. But as you know, in Revelation chapter 12, it tells us three things are required for us to overcome. The blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony or the testimony of Jesus. And we did not um, fear losing our lives unto them. We need those three things in order to overcome. Because if you are afraid of dying, oh then you are going to take the mark and say, I am preserving my life. But we got to realize when we come to Jesus, we got to say, God, I'm ready for death. If you won't die for Jesus, how are you going to live for him? I usually say, if you won't live for Jesus, how are you going to die for him? But now it's, if you won't die for Jesus, how are you going to live for him? And so we got to realize in these times, this is why God is trying to shore us up and strengthen us because these are the things that we're going to be facing as God's people. Okay. How do modern day Pharisees shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces or keep people from believing in Jesus? A distraction other than Jesus, like Mary or Allah or Buddha or cows and rats. I can't believe that is a real thing, but it is mm -hmm. with the Indian culture. Um, Hindu Hindu culture, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Gosh, you know Santa Claus. It, it's so many distractions to pull you away on what the meaning of Jesus really is. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have here. The Catholic Church does not preach that one must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. Instead. It emphasizes traditions, liturgies, and the worship of Mary as the mother of God. You know, I think it was several years ago, it was this current Pope, he was in public, and there was this woman, she was just so happy to see him, she went and, and grabbed onto him, and he pushed the woman away. He pushed her away. Like, get off of me. Wow. You know, she was seeing him as Jesus. Wow. Mm. One woman doesn't know if you go to the real Jesus, he will never push you away. It, it just ever. hurt my heart so much. He pushed her away. This was the priest? This was the Pope. <gasps> oh, well, him. This current Pope. He pushed her away. And I'm like, this poor woman's heart is so crushed. And nobody has taught her that the, the real Savior would never push you away. Right. He's just a man who thinks he's God. <laughs> he thinks he's God. And so does everybody else. <laughs> Wait, the Pharisees, they're trying to close up the door to heaven to the people. People don't know the true way to Jesus. You know, I had a friend, he, he was Catholic. I was going through some time. And, you know, it was actually, Pastor Kula had preached on john chapter 9 i hope i have the cd i gotta go try and find it and i sent this exact um story to him and when he called me he said oh my goodness dion do you think the man's eyes were only physically blind and it just went Shh. and he said no he wasn't only physically blind god was trying to uh, say that he was also spiritually blind and he said he went to church he went to catholic mass and there was a book there. And guess what? In the book, there was a prayer to receive Jesus. That's how he received Jesus. Wow. In the Catholic Church, in a prayer book. There was nobody there to tell him how. But God led him to the book. 
Wow. And I remember when, you know, I was searching for God. I, you know, we think we're searching for God. It was God calling me and I'm searching. You know, he was searching he, for He's me. already chosen us. Exactly. He we know. didn't have to search. He already chose us. Right. And I'd go to churches and they would preach. I never heard anyone give the call of salvation until I moved to Pennsylvania and I went to that Baptist church. And the pastor said at the end of the service, anyone wants to receive Jesus, raise your hand. And it was a Baptist church? Yes, right. Really? There were so Baptist some of them do believe in the, the prayer of salvation because some of them don't. Right, it was a, not the Baptist church. No, they're big on salvation. But I was going to other churches, which were not, they weren't Baptist church. They were just other denominations that I was okay. searching. Oh, that's and, nice. Yes, when I went to the Baptist church, I heard the pastors. When I said to myself, oh my God, I said, I've never heard that in my life, but I said, I'm good with God already. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. Wow. God was like, really? You know, and he, you know, he set up circumstances that I got saved, but yeah. So you have many churches, you go there, you're not even hearing the prayer of salvation. No. You go to these, the, the, the churches that have embraced homosexuality, you ain't gonna yes. hear that salvation prayer in there they can't have that salvation prayer in there because they have drifted away from god they don't have no salvation they they have how should i say it? they're trying to say that the cross has no power to change lives they're mm -hmm. not going to be preaching on the blood of jesus no the they're not no can wash away your sins and when jesus come into your heart he transform you and delivers you from sin and all those lusts. Sexuality, they um that's what they turned they turned it to sexuality. Like if like if Jesus was sexual and and it's sad because it's all over YouTube. Um they that they they did and they have sexualized Jesus that he loved. Um being with men, but that he also loved being with women. So they they have completely disgustingly sexualized Jesus. It's disgusting and it's really, really sad. And we have to and we must continue to pray. And that was what the Olympics was trying to do. Yes. Yep. It was disgusting. Sexual, yes. Sexualizing Jesus, sexualizing Jesus, sexualizing mm -hmm. the disciples. It, it, it's, but Jesus overall, who was never sexually active at all, at all, and he never, ever sinned. But here are the Pharisees trying to say, like, like if he was a human that sinned when he did not, you know? It's, it's crazy, and it, it was bad then, but it's even worse today. It's even worse today, and that's why you know judgment is coming. Um, I also have here Muslims worship Allah and Muhammad the Prophet, and they refuse to believe in the deity of Jesus. They say Jesus was just a prophet. You have Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but refuse to believe that He is God the Son, and the Jews refuse to believe that Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ. So we have a whole slew of stuff going on here. <laughs> it's crazy. It's religion. This is what religion is. Exactly. But we thank religion. God. <laughs> if he could save me, a blind one, and remove the scales from my eyes, he can save anyone. Thank That's you. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let's move on to John chapter 9, verses 24 through 34. Did you want me to read that? Please go. 24 through 34. So for the second time, they called in the man who had been blind and told him, God should get the glory for this because we know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. Oh, gosh. I don't know whether he is a sinner, the man replied, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. No. But what he what did he do? They asked. 
How did he heal you? Look, the man exclaimed. I told you once. Didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to, do you want to become his disciples too? Then they cursed him and said, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. Why? That's very strange, the man replied. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. You were born a total sinner, they answered. Are you trying to teach us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. Wow, this man is telling them. Exactly. Literally, you hard, blind people. How many times do I have to repeat myself? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I when you don't, you there was they, they didn't have anything to stand on. The man is saying, "Listen, I know I've been born blind. I, I'm trying to tell you." And then he said to them, "He said, do you want to become his disciples too? Is that why you keep on asking me?" Like, oh my yeah. gosh. Some, some sarcasm there. Oh my that, God. He was pissed. He was like, how many times do I need to tell these people I was blind? My parents told you I was born it's blind. So I'm telling you again, I was born blind and now I can Ooh. see. And no one else could do this but this man. So of course I'm going to believe he is Jesus Christ the Messiah, like he said. No one else could do this. Exactly. Because you guys... You have been here ruling and reigning. You ain't never healed me. That's right. <laughs> you never did. I've been born blind. You never came here. You never touched me. You never laid hands on me and healed me. And the man came and healed me. Of course, I'm going to put my trust in him because I know where I was. This is experiential Christianity. And this is what we need. Yes. You know, there is cerebral Christianity. People just believe, oh, yes, theologians, we study the Bible. But when you have gone through something, this man knew he was born blind. I was blind, now I can see. Look how many foolishness that this man is not the Messiah was from. <laughs> if you want to kick me out of the synagogue, fine, but I know I was born blind. And I can see. Very powerful. Why yeah. did the um, Pharisees refuse to believe that Jesus healed them? Because they saw God as just a man, like any other man. They didn't want to say that he was Jesus. Like, he's just a man. That's why they kept on asking over and over. They would have to believe that he was the Messiah. They would have to believe. So they refuse to believe. Listen, when when human beings, when we don't want to do something, we don't want to do it. We will concoct any kind of story to not do what we're supposed to do. It's just like, you know, the scripture says, light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light. Yeah. The true light is in the world. Why do people not come to church? Because you start preaching, they're going to start feeling uncomfortable. Oh my God, they're talking about me. I know what I'm doing. You don't want to go to church and hear you're sinning and you love your sin. Mm -hmm. They love what they're doing. They love um, being, you know, quote unquote, the religious leaders, you know, people pleasing. People look up to me. Oh, I'm all of this and that. Yeah. One of the things you're going to realize is human beings love when other human beings praise them and look up to them. Yeah. People love being celebrities. Exaltation. People, yes. Yeah. Love having power. I mm -hmm. am somebody. I'm such the total opposite. I don't <laughs> like attention. So it's like, I'm like, I'll stand in the corner. But some people, you're right. Some people love it so much that they can't stop talking. 
Exactly. I have to be the center of attention. We see narcissism right in our, the public square. Yeah. It is so disgusting. <sighs> I see it. I see it all the time. It's, it's you know, exalting yeah. themselves like if they were God. Exactly. And they don't see anything wrong with it. Like the Pharisees see absolutely nothing. They really in their heads have thought all their lives that they are up there and above everyone else. When God says it's better to be last. The pride. I, listen, I've seen listen, I've seen stuff happening in 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 America. You see it, but it's not so blatant sometimes. But I've seen it in Africa. I see them bringing in this pastor. He's on a chair and the people are lifting him up. He can't walk on the ground. They're going to lift him up and carry him into the church. I mean, I've seen, I've seen YouTube some... videos of it. <laughs> I've seen YouTube videos of that person that you're, yeah. It is, I can't believe they really do that. And Jesus, Jesus says, listen, I am not going to share my glory with another. This is a very dangerous thing. Even these false prophets. You know, you got that vision. You know, the other day I was saying, God, why do you have them continue? But everything is just for a time because God has a plan and God is so loving, he gives them time to repent. But he has a set day for judgment if they don't repent. That's what God said. He says, Dion, I've given everybody free will. Yeah. Like, God, they're, they're leading your people astray. Why you don't move? But I'm telling you, it's going to move soon. You see, it's scary. Judgment. It's scary, Dion. You know why? Because why are people not reading the word for themselves? Lazy. Sorry. <laughs> that is a fact lazy to read ah, I don't like reading well you should be reading the word of God because the facts are in there don't go by me read the word of God exactly every one of us should be a Bible scholar now everybody should be in the Bible for themselves mm -hmm. when the apostle Paul preached to the Bereans they didn't just take what they, he said they were in the scriptures too making sure that what he said was true. We all have to be in the scriptures. Don't just listen to what anybody say. Every one of us need to be in the scriptures for ourselves. You know, someone said to me the other day, oh, I am not a Bible scholar. Listen, when God wrote this book, he wrote it for everyone. You don't have to be no Bible scholar. Listen, everybody got to be a Bible scholar now. Everybody got to be in the yes, word. That's right. Well, I can't believe they would even say that. Hi. Yes, I, know nothing, I don't think anything surprises me anymore. It's... Nothing. nothing. People have been Christians for years and never ever read the Bible. I know. <laughs> and they jump on you when they don't even know what they're talking about. So they've never heard certain things. One time I, I said, first John, this person jumped on me. There's no, what do you mean first John? I said, there's first John in the Bible. If you go before Revelation, you see first John. You know, you know what <laughs> <laughs> but that goes to show you the person never has read the Bible. Exactly. And so then we, you know, and that's why God is after us. And that's why God is angry. These people lazy. Because let me tell you, when you come to Christ, it takes work. It takes work. You gotta, you, you gotta go to church. You wanna sleep in. God says, I have an appointment with you, nine o'clock or ten o'clock on Sundays. And you don't want to show up. How is he going to promote you to the next level? It's just like if we're at work. If you don't show up at work, you ain't going to get no promotion. You're not going to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but uh, for God, we want to, you know. Take a break. Exactly. Don't want to do what we're supposed to do. You know. It takes work to be a Christian. It, it's work. To read the Bible and to pray. That's right. And to meet for Bible study. There sometimes you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm tired today. And me too. <gasps> and I'm like, no, no. Push, this push. is my church. <laughs> yep. This, this is where I get my wisdom from. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. You have lazy Christians. Lazy Christians. At least read a verse, which is a little bit. 
I think too little bit, but at least a verse that's going to speak to you out loud, you know, and then God is going to start opening your, your eyes and softening your heart to read a little bit more each time until you're reading the whole Bible. Yes, I told you what I saw, weapons of mass distractions. <sighs> weapons of mass distractions coming against us Christians. Things to distract us from doing what we're supposed to do. Way too and many things. Way too many distractions yeah. nowadays. Yeah. And this is the time that God is saying prepare because challenging times are ahead. Right. Only the ones who are fellowshipping with me and, and hearing my voice is, is going to be able to make it. God, yeah. us, Jesus, help us. All right, let's... Okay. Why did they throw the man out of the synagogue? They kicked him out. Oh, he told them um, it's here. 34. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Luke said that he was a sinner because he was telling them the truth and having to repeat himself again to them. And they took offense to that. Exactly. Yeah. He says, now, now that is you don't know where he comes from yet he opened my eyes you don't you 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 are the religious leaders you're supposed to have more knowledge than me yeah. and you don't know where he comes from <laughs> and he said we, he started preaching to them we know that god does not listen to sinners isn't that what you have taught us that god doesn't listen to sinners so why would god listen to him he listens to the godly person who does his will Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. In the Old Testament, there's never been a miracle no. of one's eyes being opened. He said, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. I hear the little, um, what do you call me? What do you call it? Lay Christian. You are the religious leaders. And you can't tell this man is from God? I mean, come on. You know, and then in the Old Testament, what they had that was really good is God literally showed up for them. And they still didn't believe. They still sinned like crazy, which is why he had to bring Jesus. He was literally bringing angels to them who would literally speak to them of the chosen ones, obviously. You know, he showed up. And they still didn't believe. And now he brings Jesus That's to them. I know. Who but... is literally there again in human form, healing, and they still don't want to believe either. It's crazy. Yeah, I think in the Old Testament, they saw all the, the, uh, the miracles. And they were just stubborn. God said they're a stubborn and a stiff-necked people. And they wanted their own way because... You're right. They didn't want to believe because in, in the book of Jeremiah, you know, things had got so bad. God had brought the Babylonians against the people. And uh, uh, they had a choice. They could go to Egypt or stay in um, Judea. And so they went to Jeremiah and they said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, listen, I know we haven't really listened to you, but this time we're really going to listen to you. Go to God and pray for us and, and tell us where we're supposed to go, whether we're supposed to stay in Judea or we're supposed to go to Egypt. So Jeremiah went, prayed and fasted. He got the word and he came to them. He said, guys, listen, God says you are to stay here. Do not go down to Egypt because if you go down to Egypt, you're going to die. You know what they said to him? That's not true. I will not believe you. We're going down to Egypt. And they grabbed Jeremiah and went down to Egypt. See, they don't want to obey. Obedience brings the blessings. That's right. Oh my gosh, that's right. Yep, we're living testimonies. Yeah, pack up your bag and move. move that's right, front. listen. In these days, people really need to be listening to God because he might be telling you to move somewhere to avoid destruction for you and your family. And yes. You pay attention and yes. to be obedient. I just told, you know, the story of um, 2019, God sent the prophet to those Christians down in Europe. 
what they had to do. If they didn't yep. do it, war was coming, they refused. They didn't do it. And then we see the difference with Jonah. God told Jonah, Jonah, go preach to those people. You know, Jonah fought God. But when he went down there, the people repented and avoided judgment. And God has been sending people to us, to America, and to the different nations. Repent of your sins. You know, I'm still praying, though. I'm like, God, please help us. Please help us. My gosh, yes. And I pray for families, our, fam our own families, and, and for everyone to just be obedient. Yes. yes. That's why judgment is coming. All right, uh, final uh, scriptures. John chapter 9, verses 35 through 41, if you can read that for us. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Oh, 35 through 41. John 9, 35 through 41. Did you want me to read that as well? Please. Uh -huh. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the men and asked, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you. Yes, Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshipped Jesus. Then Jesus told him, I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Some Pharisees who were standing nearby heard him and asked, Are you saying we're blind? If you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, Jesus replied. But you remain guilty because you claim you can see. Wow. 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 So how do you think the man felt when the Pharisees threw him out of the synagogue? I don't think he cared. I don't think he cared either. He was just happy to get his type back. I think he was a little hurt, but you know, it's like these people, but you know, Jesus Christ came to him and he knew, he knew he found the truth. He knew, listen, I can see. If they want to throw me out of here, <laughs> you, you, you know, come on. I believe you, Jesus. That's what he said. Exactly. I, believe, I believe that you are the Messiah. Exactly. Name a religion that if a member gets born again and believe in Jesus, he or she is excommunicated, sometimes even killed. Uh, Muslims. Yes, 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 yes. Even Jehovah's Witnesses as me, you know, when you get born again. I, was, not, I don't think murder, but um, excommunicated. Communication, yes. yes, yes. They kick you out. That I, yeah, I remember that. And um Utah. Um the Mormons. Oh really they can get oh Mormons wow. as well. Oh wow. Mm -mm -mm. How did Jesus show that he cared and he had compassion for the man? Because he believed in him. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he, he he went to him after he was thrown out. He went to him after he was thrown out. Yeah. And, yeah. And so he comforted him and validated him. You know, Jesus yeah. healed him, but then he had left him, but then Jesus went back to him and revealed himself to him and comforted him. And as if to say, don't worry about those Pharisees. Yes, they excommunicated you, they threw you out of the synagogue, but you have found the Messiah. Amen. And you have eternal life. And things are going to change for you. For I know the plans I have for you are to prosper you and not to harm you. Amen. To give you hope and a future. How do you think the man's life changed drastically after Jesus healed him spiritually and physically? Like a new person. Yeah. Remember, he used to... Um, he was a beggar. His, he was a beggar. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he did not have his self-esteem must have been low. He can't see anything. He's not having any pleasure in life. His parents would he just smelled. bring him. <laughs> right. Every day and just drop him there for him to go. Yes. Back. My God, now he can't see. Let me tell you, he's going to enjoy the world. 
He's going to get a job. He's going to build himself up. He can get a family now. He can, yeah. you know, get a wife. And everything is about to change. As John 10, 10 says, right? Jesus says, it is the thief who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life abundantly. Now he's going to be enjoying the abundant life of why Jesus Christ came. Amen. Amen. And that's what happened. When Jesus comes into our lives, he gives us eyes to see. He removes the blindness from us. And he gives us new life. Some of us, you know, we had low self-esteem. Some of us, my goodness, we were nowhere. He raises us from the, the poor, from the ash heap. He builds us up. As the scripture says, you know, we are now a new creation in Christ. We now have a new identity. We are now children of God. All of the blessings of Abraham are ours. God has opened up a new life for us. An abundant life. And now we have eternal life. We have a friend who will never leave nor forsake us. We're never alone. We have a protection. We have a, a you know, a protector. And we have everlasting life. And we have a great hope and a future. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What is God going to use to judge the people of this world? What is he going to use? Yeah. How is he going to judge them? When uh, he comes? Verse 39. For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see. Probably I, I, I worded it not too good. So that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. For judgment I have come into the world to reveal myself to people that I am the Messiah. Everyone is going to be judged on whether they choose to believe and receive me or not. Because that is the only way you can get your sins forgiven. If you don't receive me, your sins remain. You remain under God's wrath. Because the only way to salvation is through me. John 3 verse 36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. These Pharisees, they're saying, we see. But you have this man right here who couldn't see. I healed him, but yet you still refuse to see. To, to see. And that's why Jesus says, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now you are guilty of sin. Because now you claim you can see your guilt remains. It is coming out of your own mouth. You're telling me you're not, you're refusing to see me as the Messiah. It's your own choice. It's not me not <clears throat> revealing the Father to you. And revealing the power of God to you. It's not me not doing my work. And revealing the glory of God to you. Um, healing men who were born blind. You know he was born blind. But you are the one refusing to see. So you stand condemned. Because you're the one who doesn't want to believe. It's not me. Uh, here. And then we're going to wrap up. How did your life change after God helped you, healed you of spiritual blindness? Oh my gosh, I could see everything. I could see the lies of the enemy. I could, I could, I could feel it. I could see it. I could sense it. Everything. It it was crazy for me. Before I didn't care. Um, when I had backslid, because I was born and raised a Christian, but when I was hurt, hurt, badly hurt as a teenager, I walked out, I was angry at God and everything, and I became super blind, and my heart was super hard, but God kept showing up in my life, 
And the day that he removed those veils that was covering my eyes and had softened my heart, I could see everything for what it was. And it was scary, let me tell you. It was scary. I was like, I don't want that. I want Jesus. That's who I want. And ever since then, my gosh, trials and tribulations, but here I am today, exactly where God told me, exactly where God showed me, here I am today, perfectly whole and perfectly made in his image and perfectly loved by him. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. My mind changed drastically. I, as I told you, I didn't believe that Jesus Christ was God until he removed those blinders that night and I could see. Oh my gosh. And I was mad. I was so mad that I was deceived. <laughs> I was so angry. I couldn't believe that these people had deceived me. But then I realized they were deceived too and they didn't know. Because people who are deceived don't know they're deceived. That they don't read the word of God for themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Because I never read, I mean, I've read the Bible, but not all of it. And, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses have their own Bible. I mean, remember I told you in John 1, 1, they have a different total translation. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so there are so many people out there who are deceived. But we thank God that he has the power and the authority to heal them of spiritual blindness. Thank you, Jesus. I was blind, but now I see. Isn't that the song for Amazing Grace? Amazing yeah. Grace. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was blind, but now I see. It's all by the grace of God. Ephesians chapter two. I don't know why God's going to tell me to go there. I'm going to go there real quick. Now we're going to finish up. Ephesians what? Two verses eight. And nine. If you can read that for us. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. Ephesians. I love the Ephesians. Yes. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Okay. okay. Ephesians 2 verse 9. 8 and 9. Okay. Agree. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Amen. So it is by grace we have been saved through faith. And it right. is of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works. So no one can boast. So these Pharisees, they are boasting, oh, I'm the religious leader. And this man has received the grace of God. God has opened up his eyes. Uh -huh. They're trying to use works to say, oh, we don't work on the Sabbath and we don't do all of these things to get saved. Salvation is by grace. The Ten Commandments can't save us. Mm -hmm. It can't save us. We thank God for the Ten Commandments, but it can't save us. We're sinners. Only Jesus can. And so these yeah. Pharisees, they're holding on to that Ten Commandments. They're not even obeying it. <laughs> they're still holding on to me. Yes, they're still under law. Many, many Jewish people are still under law. But God has a plan to reveal himself to them. And you have some denominations. They try to hold on to Jesus and the law. They try to say, because you're not worshiping on the Sabbath, you know, you're not right with God. But what does it say here? If you worship on the Sabbath, it cannot save you. It is by grace. You have been saved through faith. By right. grace. None of us can earn salvation. It is through That's grace. Right. You just got to receive it. It is the gift of God. Not by work. Works cannot save us. Praying 10 times a day can't save us. That's right. Going down to uh, Mecca, go around that rock, can't save you. Going to kiss that rock, can't sa save you. Making pilgrimage to Mecca, can't save you. Kissing the Pope's hand, 
can't save you. Oh my gosh, no. A statue can't save you. Worshiping <laughs> cows can't save you. Worshiping the devil can't, surely can't save you. That's right. Which is huge. Their churches are getting really big. I don't even know why they call it churches because they're not, but the satanic churches. Exactly. We need to pray. We need to pray, 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 pray. Only Jesus. That's yes. right. Only Jesus. And we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God. Salvation. Thank you for salvation. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved, you and your household. That's Amen. right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.